فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روب الخير بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters, the verses that were read in Salatul Fajr, they are beginning with the verse of hope, the verse that has the most hope in it in the Quran. It is a verse of Surah Az Zumar, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, that means tell them. What should he tell them? Ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim. O oh, my worshippers who have transgressed against themselves, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah, for indeed He is most forgiving, most merciful. He will forgive all your sins. I want to highlight to you the mercy of Allah. Allah is so merciful that He is addressing the sinful people as, Ya Ibadi, O oh, my worshippers. If Allah was not merciful, He would call the sinful people, O oh, my enemies. He would possibly call them all those who are cursed. But Allah says, Ya Ibadi, O my worshippers, who have done something wrong? I want you to know I will forgive you, no matter what you have done. For indeed, I am most forgiving, most merciful. This is the mercy of Allah. So I know when I have done something wrong that Allah has given me hope. He calls me a worshipper of His. He calls me with a beautiful, endearing name. What is the mercy beyond that mercy? Imagine someone does wrong to you and you say, my friend, come here, subhanallah. And if you are serious about it, it is something major. So this is the mercy of Allah, that He speaks to us who have sinned against Him, calling us, oh my worshippers, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. He will forgive all your sins, for indeed He is most forgiving, most merciful. But then we have one problem. Some people, when they look at that, they start thinking, I can sin and I know Allah is merciful. So in order to avoid that, and another scenario is when a person says, I have sinned, I know Allah is merciful, but I will seek that forgiveness later on in my life. Not now. I still want to sin a little bit more. Some people think like this. I'm not yet ready to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then Allah says, وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ you, you, You'd better get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and surrender to Him very quickly before punishment comes to you and no one will help you. So there is a type of punishment that can come to people and no one can do anything about it. Subhanallah. May Allah protect us from earthquakes. May Allah protect us from floods. May Allah protect us from any form of punishment. Not to say that every time there is an earthquake or a flood, it is the punishment. Sometimes it is a test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you have been transgressing against Allah, then indeed it is a punishment. Remember this. You ask yourself, am I a good person? Am I trying to please Allah? Am I seeking the forgiveness of Allah? If the answer is yes, then the negative that comes in your life is not the punishment of Allah. He won't punish you whilst you are seeking forgiveness. But there is an issue where if you are sinful and you are transgressing against Allah and you have no intention of turning to Allah, then when something negative happens to you, it is indeed the punishment, the rod of Allah has now whipped. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So the first type of, of uh, prolonging in sin and not seeking forgiveness, Allah says the punishment may come to you in a way that nobody will be able to help you at all, no matter what and who they are. The second type of punishment, Allah says, وَاتَّبِعُوا أَحْسَنَ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ Follow, quickly, follow the best of what is revealed to you. Follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah. You know, if you ask yourself as Muslims, what do you follow? You must always ask yourself that question. What do you follow? You need to have a specific answer. And that answer should be universal from the beginning right to the end. It never changes. What do I follow? I follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And I follow the Ijma'ah. I follow that which is the consensus of the Muslimin. Subhanallah. I follow what 
I have been taught from Allah's words and from the words of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If that is true, you will continue asking yourself, no matter what you do, what I'm doing, is it what I'm supposed to be following? Is it what I'm supposed to be following? If it is not, drop it. If it is, strengthen it. Learn more. So Allah says, follow the best of that which has been revealed before punishment overtakes you in such a way that you don't even realize that this was the punishment of Allah and that it will come and it came. Sometimes a person progresses in life, they go higher and higher in terms of wealth and health and authority and everything is improving and increasing. But if he is far from Allah, a day can come when he's at the top that suddenly he crashes and he, he didn't realize that that would happen. So Allah says, you know what? Turn to me before a day comes without realizing you will be wiped out. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So this is why it is the mercy of Allah when a person becomes old or they are sick or they are terminally ill and they think they are going to die, they will be preparing for death because at least it's the mercy of Allah that they know halfway that now I'm not well at all. The doctors have given me two weeks to stay and to live. You might live for long, you might live for many years, but at least it gave you a chance to turn to Allah. Allah is tapping you to tell you, hey, start preparing. You are now coming to me, subhanallah, in a way that is a mercy of Allah. If you don't turn when you you are sick and ill and when you are now aging then you are even worse may Allah forgive us because Allah has given you a reminder and you, you did not take it but not always does that happen sometimes suddenly a man is healthy while he is sinning his life is gone the punishment comes may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that so these are the verses that were read today also they continue if you were to read these verses, inshallah, the end of Surah Al-Zumar, you will find that Allah speaks about those who are arrogant and those who did not turn to Allah, how they will regret when they get to Allah and they will say, Oh Allah, grant us a return, give us a return, we want to go back. If we had another chance, we would be better people. Allah says, No. My verses came to you. My verses were read to you, but you belied them. You did not want them. You didn't even listen to what was said. It didn't even change you. Was takbart and you were arrogant. And you were among those who didn't even believe. Not at all. You turned away. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who have belied the verses of Allah on the day of judgment, their faces will be darkened. They will be embarrassed. They won't be able to show face. When you have a big criminal and he is, being, he is being escorted into the courts and the cameraman and the journalists are trying to take photos, what does he do? He wants to hide his face. He doesn't want to show the whole world who is he because there's a criminal that has just, there's a crime that has been discovered. I'm sure you have seen this happening where criminals are being taken in handcuffs and as they are going, they want to hide their faces with a hood or put their face down. That is the condition of those who will be criminals on the day of Qiyamah. Their faces will be darkened, meaning they will be embarrassed. May Allah not do that to us. And then Allah speaks about the two, uh, uh, the two groups of people. Those who are taken to Jannah and those who are taken to Jahannam. First, Allah says, those who will be members of hellfire, they will be taken into hellfire in groups. What type of groups? There are many uh, opinions mentioned of the scholars. You and your friends, you go together. Who you used to mix with and who helped you to get to Jahannam, you start going together. So you go in a group into Jahannam and as you get into Jahannam, you find the door would have been closed prior to you getting there. When you get there, the door will be opened. You go in and the door will be closed again. It's like a prison. You go to the prison now. The doors are closed. They are locked. As a prisoner is about to enter, the doors are open. He goes in and it's locked again. Now he's in there forever. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the gatekeepers of Jahannam will ask a question to those who will be going to hell. Hey, did a messenger not come to you reading you some verses of the Quran and verses of Allah reminding you of this day? They will say, Bala, yes, indeed. We had few people who came to us reminding us. So what happened? Ah, you know, we didn't take them seriously. We didn't take them seriously. Allah says, well, you are, you are the one who is going to lose. 
Then we have those, may Allah make us from those who will enter Jannah. Say Amen. Amen. You have those who shall enter Jannah to Firdaus. Allah says they will also enter in groups. You enter in your group of friends with the Nabi, perhaps, who, has, who is the one whom you followed and whom you loved the most. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, one wonders, may Allah make us from among the, the correct group. Amen. So we, as we will enter Jannatul Firdaus, now I'm saying we, you see, as we will enter Jannatul Firdaus in groups, the gatekeepers will be saying, Salamun alaykum tibtum fadkhuluha khalideen. Allahu Akbar. Peace be upon you. Peace be upon you. You have done well. You have done very well. Enter into Jannatul Firdaus forever and ever. And there is a good description. Allah says, Hatta idha jauha wa futihat abwaabuha. When they get to the door of Jannah, they will find it will be wide open waiting for them. Wa futihat. When it comes to Jahannam, it says futihat abwaabuha. The doors were open when they got there. But the people of Jannah, when they got there, they found the doors were already open, waiting for them. It's like a palace. I gave you the example of a prison. The doors were closed, opened, and then closed again. But a palace, when you have a meeting or an appointment at a palace, as you are going, the doors are open. There are people welcoming you from the gate. Welcome, welcome. They are rushing with you, taking you in, to, right up to where you have to get to, right? Your place. This is the palace. So the description between a wow, that wow in the Arabic language, there and the wow that is not there, is a difference between being closed and then opening and being opened and waiting for you. That's the difference. It's wow al-hal. It is explaining the hal, the condition. So amazing how Allah describes this. I know I can go on speaking, but wallahi, my brothers and sisters, these are just some beautiful reminders. These were the verses that we read. Salatul Fajr, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. May it be a means of changing our lives. May it be a means of seeking forgiveness for the sake of Allah before it is too late. May Allah keep us strong. May Allah protect us from shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep the devil and shaitan very far from us. May he make us so strong that we can overpower the devil at all times. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad.